Good morning. We'll open this meeting of the SBPHC uh, July 8th, 9 a.m. Uh, the first item is administrative review and approval of Jane's great minutes from last time. Uh, anybody have any comments or corrections on those minutes? Um, no, I, I would like to move that we accept the minutes as submitted. I do have one question yes. about, it, it's more of a process thing. Jane, should we add but the documents that we provide at the previous meeting on our minutes out of just curiosity? Just in, I think it makes sense. You know, I, I can help you with that list mm -hmm. because I, you know, usually I only bring the agenda, but the roster and stuff, but there's going to be like other documents. I'm just wondering oh, if that would make yeah. sense for the future. Sure. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, I think so. If we, if we reference them, I'll personally yeah. make yeah. sense yeah. Uh, of the conversation. Yeah. About okay. Okay. So we have a motion. Can I have a second for the approval second. of the minutes? Thank you. Any further discussion? Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> we have a quorum here, so I guess we're safe, whatever we register here. Uh, the second item, J&J Opioid Settlement Subcommittee update. Uh, we have one member who's not been at those meetings, but we're hoping we'll start. <laughs> Oh, just had one. <laughs> I had one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We've had uh, two meetings so far to talk about this. And uh, Jim, do you want to carry that conversation? Sure. If, if everyone recalls, we established a subcommittee of, of the collaborative, which was comprised of myself, Rebecca, Pat, and Ellie. And we, we, all, we invited Smitty and I think Gary to that. Um, so we met the first time. We had a pretty good, lively discussion about process, what to think about, and I think and Smitty was at that meeting. What what came out of that meeting is he, you know, he, he actually had a really good suggestion where we actually scheduled, uh, invited all the town administrators in South County to come to a Zoom meeting with the subcommittee to have a discussion, and so initially everyone we included back at two by the way uh, which right, it was pignatelli's district district and so we we did meet with the town administrators uh it was a pretty good discussion a lot of feedback um it was really about gauging interest to let them know that there is conversation happening about it but we didn't have all the answers um but some of the conversation came up about you know, advocating for the Rural Recovery Center because they service all of South County. Mm -hmm. You know, the Breen Center was brought up, but Gary mentioned that the Breen Center does partner with the Rural Recovery Center, but it, there was no decisions made. It was really just to continue to dialogue. And we took a lot of that feedback back and we met this past week, Tuesday as a group. And Pat and Gary are going to work together on like a formal rural recovery proposal. Like, okay, if you're going to pool your dollars and if Lennox is going to contribute X dollars, what is that money going to go to? And then we're going to kind of frame that up and tee that up and kind of finalize that and then possibly reconvene with the town administrators to kind of make it more formal and maybe put it on like a collaborative letterhead. So at least you know, Brandy and others go back to their select where there'll be, there'll be a clear, concise message saying, if Otis contributes your dollars, this is where they're going to go to. Um, you know, some towns are still kind of up in the air. And if we're able to figure out a way to pull some resources together, we will. If we can't, we can't. I think the goal of the collaborative is to advocate and facilitate, but we can't be the decision maker in this. Right. There was a uh, request that that at the meeting with the um, administrators, that they sort of give, be given a couple more options. That it not that they just wanted some education around what uh, what else is going on or where else they might uh, look at spending their money. So we we actually didn't. We thought we would do that, but then we didn't really talk about it at our last meeting. Well, and, and I th and I think too, like there's question about like, okay, does the state provide free Narcan? And if we can find those resources and maybe encompass that into our proposal, you know, like don't use the opioid settlement money to buy Narcan if it's available for free. Mm -hmm. So we're, right. it was sort of that right. kind right. of thing, but we're still, we're still quite a bit of ways away from that. I mean, I don't know what the, if, it's, if we're in a hurry or not, but we can only do the best we can and trying, trying to get 15 towns on the same page is not the easiest task. 
and we and we don't all have all that capacity to make that happen. But we'll I think we'll just work, continue to work as a subgroup. I think we'll maybe reconvene with the town administrators when we think we have a solid ask, and then just okay. see how it goes. I've got a silly question. Um, is there a time frame at all from when they give you the money to when they the state wants to see you starting to use it? There are some guidelines for that. I don't know okay. exactly what they are. But there's um, no rush at all. Not exactly well, at this point. Yeah, except that some of the money is. Well, there's reporting requirements. And then right, there's, you've right. got to, I mean, if they're going to so give you an FY23 allocation, it's got to be spent so FY23. Right, right, right. Probably right. Make um, soon, well, and right? I, I think um, this morning I got an email from the, I don't know, from some state entity that basically is says that um, they're going to have to pass actually legislation to allow this money to be put in a special revenue fund okay. instead of in general fund. Okay. So like, I just think there's a lot of moving parts. Okay. Right. And and I think also one of the things that we, we ran into was the fact that FY23, of course, all of our towns have already done that yes, budget. So, you know, to how that's all going to work, you're right. That's a lot of moving parts. Yeah. But right now, my assumption is that it's up to the state to sort of yeah. come up with sort it. Have some work um, to do. Yeah. And, okay. and I think that happened with our other with our other monies that have come through the state and fed money, you know, it all tends to sort of flow for a while yeah. until they can kind of get it. Well, one thing that did come up, folks, was, you know, the reporting requirement and right. the burden on right. that. Right. So each town's going to get an allocation. There's going to be a burden, you know, and especially right. smaller towns that may not have staff and part time. You know, you can track the expenditures. There's a reporting. There's right. metrics and data that you got to report back maybe to the AG's office. And so a benefit of pooling is putting people together to help yeah, deal with that. Right, and also basically get what you get to say is we assigned all of this over to there. Right, yeah, so, and, and see their report, which right. will make AG happier. But I, I do have one thought about the ongoing committee. Um, it was pretty targeted for town administrators. That yeah, the first, the first one. Right, was, yeah. but there was a definite feeling when I thought I was going to be coming to the meeting um, from our guys was like, well, once again, nobody understands the fact that we don't have an administrator. And I was like, no, 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 no. It's okay. Cause I'll be there. Right. <laughs> so I am like your input oh. for this. Right. And of course then probably scheduled it for 9 PM instead of 9 AM, which is okay. why I wasn't there. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. We weren't, I don't think we were, the intent was to be exclusive. No, it no, was really it isn't to, at all. I'm just right. bringing it up because what this is, you know, we're, we're we dealing with so this, yeah. this head issue. Yeah. Here. Yeah. We weren't clear that. And the person that brought it up had nothing to do with anything else. They just were finding something else to do. I think out. the next meeting, Pat, and I don't know if you agree or not, is, you know, and maybe we, when we do have a solid ask, mm -hmm. we can, we can open it. I, I, I think we just, we having too many people in the room without having all the answers we may have, problematic. and I don't think we yeah. really talked about that. It was really just to let them know that we're talking about this because, you know, Berkshire, that Andy Addison's talking about it and there's some confusion about, you know, hey, you pick what pool you're going to be in. And, and that, so there's a lot of confusion. I think we just want to let them know that there's conversation happening. Right. No decisions were made at all. At right. Meeting. And also the impression, you know, we're, we're having to do a little bit of pushback with some of the other organizations that are talking about, oh, well, we have a better plan for pooling and blah, blah, blah. So it seems to me that one of the things that we can do is say, hey, look, we all have time to really thoroughly look at this. Okay. Nobody is competing for a piece of the pie here. Mm -hmm. What we're doing is we're looking at options. Mm -hmm. We're giving towns options. And I think that is our collaborative's huge message mm -hmm. in its Everything. formation, in its uh, mm -hmm. you know, agenda, is giving towns options. Yeah. Right. And, and so if we can keep focusing that, and it's hard because people get personally and you know, mm -hmm. emotionally put into these kinds of things. Yeah, so, yeah. okay. So that's where we're at. And I will pass along a, um, a, a PowerPoint presentation that was put together by MHOA that was brought out things that I didn't know. Oh, so okay. I'll pass that on okay. to the group. Um, it was really clarifying and it uh, touched upon the reporting requirements. Oh, terrific. Okay. Um, new topics for discussion. 
uh, we just came across the, the training issue. I'm not sure if that's what you're referring to in that item. Not really, because that just came up <laughs> yesterday. yesterday right. <laughs> um, I don't know. I you know just probably I'll just probably I knew. Yeah. yeah. So you know we were all geared up to do this seeds assessment and go to each town. We did run into some towns that were like, we need this to be a formal process and. Um, which I absolutely agree with. It's just kind of outside the scope of what we were expecting. So um, the state is doing one in, in, in the fall. And so it felt redundant, redundant. Um, so, I mean, we have a pretty good sense of what our communities are and what their needs are. Um, and I have kind of been keeping track of that. But I think that part of what... Um, an item that I could be assisting with, especially with some of the smaller towns, um, is to help fill that out because they're going to want, you know, soil evaluator. Do you have one attached there? Um, attached that person's license. Mm -hmm. And so it's just going to be, and I think honestly, we're actually in pretty good shape um, in our 10 town region. We just need to just continue to um, to to just kind of gather that information and be ready so that we can get that turned around quickly because it's just going to benefit our collaborative for them to know where we're at, what our needs are, mm -hmm. and um, and so it sounds like a good plan, Jane. Uh, not to duplicate work and just build on what they're going to end up doing and requiring of us anyway in the fall. Yeah, and I think my, from my perspective, that big spreadsheet that, you know, Amy, Jill, and Jane put together was, that was sort of like our initiative to kind of think about like short-term, mid-term, long-term goals. And it's, it's and a very- that, Using that pattern. It's is, a very comprehensive, uh -huh. and we did the same thing with the work plan. If you remember yes, back in the beginning, right, we crafted a work plan before DPA Jane gave us a right. template. Um, and it's always good to be proactive, and I think we'll we don't, we're not sure what this needs assessment is right. going to look like, but I will tell you it's going to be a very Im important process to do to really dive deep to figure out what the needs are for the collaborative because if that may be attached to some significant funding. Mm. Do we need admin? Do we need inspector? We need this. We need that. That's going to be a very important piece when it comes up in the fall. This brings up the question, which is sort of tangential to this, but the idea of taking on more towns and negotiating yeah. what we need That'll be part in of exchange. That, That'll be so part we of haven't that. done anything on that yet. So I, I meet one well, meeting with Tierningham on Tuesday. Amy, myself, and Jill are eight o'clock meeting in the morning, which <laughs> I prefer that meeting over a night meeting. Um, so we're, 9 p.m. does not work for in, you. In, in, I guess so. There's only like two towns left in the county that aren't affiliated with anyone. That would be Hinsdale and Tierringham. Tierringham is part of the Lee School District, right? And they, right. And they we have, understand the logic. Of and this. so right. we're going to meet with them, you know, and just figure that mm -hmm. out. But if they're on board, we would enroll them in as part of our needs assessment. Right. If we're taking additional towns, blah, blah, blah. do we need a per diem nurse? Do we need an administrative assistant? They, they have a part-time health agent that's very close to retirement. They've had housing issues in the past. They've reached out to other towns and no one has capacity. So it's really up to them to figure it out. The same as field thing is sort of up in the air. Um, I know Laura said yesterday they're gonna go in and but, you know they need to figure out their short-term and long-term goals. One thing I did, mentioned to Jane the other day is like, well, if they're really interested in doing a needs assessment, they need to be very clear on who, what group they're going to be part mm -hmm. of to do the needs assessment. Right. You know, are we going to incorporate Sanders Field into a long-term needs assessment or is the Alliance going to do that? We don't, we don't want to do both. Right. So Sanders Field has their own things to sort out short-term because their health agent, as you know, Vic Herkovich, longtime health agent, you know, passed away. Mm -hmm. And so they're in a very tough position. Right. And, and again, you know, long-term speaking, it's, it's about building capacity and sustainability. Right. And so I don't have any other updates outside of it, but you're right, Pat, we need to incorporate that to what needs assessment. Right. Mm -hmm. Good. And um, I, Pat, um, I, when you were asking me, you were actually talking about the desired fall training topics. And yes. Yes. Yeah. That was so, um, so there's a couple of options I really would like to do at the end of the summer, like in September, some sort of a training, it could be attached to the meeting, it could be separate from the meeting, whatever the, um, the, the, com the committee would like. 
Um, so you mean training for the board? For the board. Uh -huh. So capacity building for the actual board. And um, I have been put in touch with um, Gwendolyn Van Zandt. Mm -hmm. um, is one of the options. She has a cultural competency program, which is interesting and really helpful. Um, um, they have stuff to offer about mutual aid network, COVID hesitancy, and harm reduction. Um, mm -hmm. So those are some options. So um, the other thing that we could do is um, I was going through um, some food code stuff and came across um, some exemptions that I did not know existed in the new food code. And I mean, I feel like I'm as familiar with the new food code. And so yeah. um, I was thinking, I have a, a sheet that we put together actually, and um, it, I think it, Great Barrington has it too, is um, it has like all your nonprofits, like whether or mm -hmm. not they need to get a permit, mm -hmm. like, you know, bake sale, do they need to get a permit? Do they have to have a, a food manager? Do they have to have um, uh, allergen awareness, right? And so it's it's actually choking. Yeah, choke saver. So it has it has like a chart so that it's really easy. And then underneath it, it has all of the descriptions. Mm -hmm. um, and so something like that might be really helpful, it's like nonprofits. Helpful. Yeah, I think even though uh, we as individuals may not be making these decisions. We know that we're approached by people who are asking us these questions mm -hmm. and to have knowledge <laughs> of it uh, and to be able to offer accurate information, uh, I think would be terrific. I would welcome that. And then the last option that I thought about is having those housing people come and do like, what is hoarding? What are the different kinds of hoarding? What are some different approaches depending on what the different types of hoarding it is? So I just wanted to think about that. And yeah, I, I the one thing that I would like to put out there is that for me personally, I think it would be great if these trainings were attached to our meeting. Yeah. Oh, sure. So yeah. that yeah. we don't have one more meeting for me to mm -hmm. misschedule mm -hmm. because it's really embarrassing to show up at 930 at night. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but but I just think that, you know, right. you're focused, you're yeah, here, right. even if you have to go until noontime, whatever, yeah. you know, and have yeah, it. I yeah, it's not that, all, it won't be all the time, but I'm really, yeah. I'm really advocating for racial and health equity training. And we, we've all been exposed to it, but I definitely want to make sure that we, we expose ourselves And even ourselves if we have that. like a, like a, we get to the point where we can plan to have trainings quarterly or whatever, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. on a regular, right, on a regular yeah. basis, because yeah. uh, we're talking about yeah. moving our meetings, stretching yeah. our meetings out, but so I think having something like that is, is great. Mm -hmm. And I, and I think also that, that one of the things that the collaborative really is going to be helpful for is uh, to be getting agents used to using us. I'm a, this agent is very used to using you, very, <laughs> a lot. Uh, but, you know, where do we go with our information? We're saying you have people who are approaching us. Well, who's actually approaching us? Is it the agents who are coming know. out? How, how many people approach you, Diane, all the time? <laughs> I don't right. like to walk in town sometimes. Well, I'm at the dump, so let me tell <laughs> you. Yeah, that's, that, that, that's my office hours. But, but yeah, so having that there, is, I think is very important. Good. Great. Okay. Um, and then one more thing is on the needs assessment, I just want to recognize we have a public health nursing needs assessment that is very comprehensive right. and, um, and well oh. thought out. So, <laughs> so I just didn't want to, like, I was focused in on the state stuff, but I just want to acknowledge yeah. that we have a really comprehensive nursing needs well, assessment. That one's about capacity and, and like staff, right? Or is it, I mean, is it also topical? I guess we don't know. We haven't yeah, that. no, it's going to be every, it's going to be basically everything. Everything like housing. Have you taken the mass fit course? What are your CEUs from that? So capacity, yeah. Yeah, capacity is more sort of, yeah. Community. Of, yeah. You know, do, do we, do, does, you know, because some towns have like the permit, the, the permit system, there's no staff to manage it. You know, I, you know, there's going to, you know, there's, money. there's a need for <laughs> an inspector in some of these towns, you know, like, Jane's picking up some of the slack and helping Sheffield and New Marlboro out, but that's not like a long-term, like sustainable thing because we need Jane to be full-time coordinator. But oh, all, like all that's, yeah. I mean, we have a shot here to really maximize this collaborative for long-term. And that includes nursing. I mean, you know, we, Amy and Jill, you know, they're, they're, they're building things as they're going along, but if we really want to do a lot of different things, 
it may take more than two nurses. We don't know what that looks like. So I think well, you we know, know it will take at least nine nurses. But whether or not we get actually in there, in there, in, in, you know, or, or even just administrative capacity. Yeah, oh yeah, it, you know, we yeah, we want to we yeah. want to build a website. Yeah. Right. I, no one here has capacity to manage a website. Right. Um, no, okay. Yeah, we got that. it. Right. <laughs> we could go on a long time, but yes, so all has to get folded in. Right. Um, the next topic, the program IMA articles of incorporation. I am so excited, right? We're done? Yeah. We're, we're technically done. Rebecca's trying to round up, I think, one more signature. We'll pull all that together and then we'll send it off as one document to all the clerks and everything, send it off to the state. And then we'll we'll start to craft like an articles of incorporation document, which is sort of like Tritown has that. We have our by it's like a we don't like I don't like to use the word bylaws because it's a town meeting right. thing, but like we have it's sort of like our operating principles. You know, we elect the chair and the vice chair, how the finances work, right. Right. quorum this, that, whatever. It's just an additional document that just helps us solidify how we manage ourselves. Right. I actually have a draft, but it's probably a little bit outdated. Um, so we'll work on that. I'll, I'll probably bring an iteration of that, Pat, to the next meeting just to get the conversation started. Good. Opioid work, I presume, Jane, that's you? Yeah, no, there's just some exciting things going on. Um, we do have um, some dialogue for harm reduction that we'd like for the boards and the and the towns to start talking about just as far as like what harm reduction is, why it's important. And um, there was a group, um, including Amy, was able to like put it into like a readable form. Um, and then we worked on it um, and we had decided that while it's all good, it's all good information. And so um, actually, our, um, ad, our intern is looking at maybe some chunking some out, and so that we can start introducing that conversation around what is harm reduction, what are some things that we can be doing as towns, and in fact, the new opioid toolkit for pu public health officials just came out. That is another thing that might be uh, um, good to, for, for us to talk about at some point, um, and there is a PowerPoint already presented for that. So that for training topics, that might be another thing that we could do because the topic of the, um, you know, the things that we need to be discussing right now, that's right at the top of the list. That's great. It's really good to hear. And I did send out the minutes from the last meeting and it had a pretty good overview of all of the initiatives. Um, and so maybe quarterly, I'll do that just to keep you guys up abreast. Terrific. Yeah, I think the top, adding that to the topic of training uh, of education. It, let's let's say training slash education, right? mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. makes it a little broader. Oh, and and then favorite topic of the URL options. <laughs> URL options. Um, we have. Uh, I looked at a bunch of different things. Um, um, unfortunately, the Jimmy Buffett fans got the CBPHC. Um, yeah, it's the South uh, Southern Bay Parrothead Club. Oh my! <laughs> yeah. They, they seem really um, invested in their URL. So um, we kind of decided on um, SB-PHC, so Southern Berkshire-PHC. Um, and that's short. It's only six letters. I think it will be easy for people. And so um, I don't know if we need to vote on it, but I'd like to move forward. Is that a dot .org, Jane? Is that like a it, dot .org? It, there's a dot .org. So it's, it's SB-PHC.org? Dot .org, yep. Right. Yep. And so with the board's blessing, then we'll just go forward, purchase that, and then have it, um, at least for now, phantom link into, into our existing web page so people can find us easier. Right, right. Which I'd I, like to make a motion. It works, it works for me. Now, is it a hyphen or an underscore? It's a hyphen. Hyphen, okay. okay. Uh, but that six letter or... So yes. It's a little weird putting it in there because we don't use a hyphen in the name at all, but it's a way of getting more close to what we need. I think yeah, it's fine. I think it's fine. Yeah, I think fine. It's, it's, I'm going to second, second your motion. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Moved and seconded to accept sb org as the URL for this wonderful organization. Anyone on Zoom have any thoughts or discussion before we vote? No? <laughs> okay. All right. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody dare oppose? Aye.
Hey. <laughs> Thank you, Freddie. Thank you, <laughs> okay. Um, terrific. That takes care of that. Public health nursing update. So nice to see you all, though I hardly recognize you. Yeah. I know. I love <laughs> the hair. I love yeah, that hair. So. Um, so nothing really huge. I uh, just wanted to share an update. You know, COVID, as you guys have seen, remains in the green low transmission zone for this part of the summer. I think we're probably going to stay there for a while longer, but expecting we're going to start taking back up in another month or so. So just to hold that in mind, um, and with that in mind, we uh, we basically depleted our very large mask supply, and we will be receiving another large amount from NEMA for free. We just have to pick it up ourselves this time. So we'll have that. We still continue to get requests from basically all the libraries um, to keep them stocked in their little green bins, and then we've been adding the COVID tests that we received from the so that Rebecca got and we did and the stuff the spread, but I know a lot of towns have received kits yeah, by we, now. That's just so that might be a thing. Bins. So just so you know, those bins are there for free to use them in the interim. Mm -hmm. Um and also consider holding on to a good chunk of them because I anticipate we're going to really need them in the fall because of the reduction in uh, testing. Yes. And you know, just people aren't really sort of planning at the macro level for mm -hmm. these waves. And so we can plan on a local level how the supplies we need. Um, uh, Jill and I are actively involved in, you know, now this is mid-July, so we're almost mid-July, we're planning uh, more actively for the fall flu clinics, and um, and then at the tail end of those, some homebound vaccine distribution, uh, and so we'll be sort of starting a little marketing around that in another month or two, but the actual planning for flu clinics, getting volunteers and all that, sure. um, we'll be doing uh, sort of emergency response simulation and, and just making sure we have all our supplies and been talking with the state about our state supply coming in and private order and all that. Um, as you know from previous meetings, uh, Jill had received half of the car seats that we'll be getting. Um, there are quite a few of them and they take up a lot of space. And so we're talking about ways to get those back out in the community and do the actual inspections that are part of that. Uh, so for now, it's on an individual basis. Jill's thinking about how to plan clinics around this and we'll let mm. you know when those are available and, and who we're gonna partner with. Uh, the, um, but there is marketing material now that um, I guess it's electronic. So yeah. they're, they're just finalizing. We just got a Spanish version. Our lovely intern helped us with that. And so we'll have those materials to distribute so we can get them out to the community. Lennox used to have, I don't know about other towns, the police used to do it. Yeah. Do you yeah. think any, there'd be any interest again with the local police stations That's to do it? That's something we had talked about. And I think actually one of their staff members um, actually attended with Jill the same week oh, that she good. went to her training. When we first started a year ago, we did sort of reach out to all of the groups we thought, fire, police, mm -hmm. and others. And it didn't seem to be actively happening in South County anymore, which is how we identified mm -hmm. it as something to target. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you yeah. might keep in mind the opportunity that the Sheffield Fair presents in September. Yeah, that's right. The Apple Squeeze, too, and Lennox. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, if nothing else to get founders, the information right, out. Right, yeah, right. yeah, so we'll think about large-scale stuff yeah. online. You know, yeah, we got Founders Day and Leave. Uh -huh. Tap websites, you know, all the ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, no, the apple squeeze, you can all, I would always be happy just to man a booze for you. Well, that's the thing, I think, yeah, you we'll know, again, as we boat. start to yeah. think about the for the Board of Health, yeah. great, yeah, I remember last year you were going to the yeah. council, right. yeah, just thinking about ways to get um, our stuff out to the community, um, you know, we've been actively involved in camp support, yeah, so far things seem okay, okay, but, you know, just yesterday <laughs> had a little outbreak of seven now campers, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm involved in conversations with some of the camp directors um with Tony Marlowe about that how to we had one party our kids sent home yeah oh, yeah she was at camp there and so then she's going back but yeah, what's exactly. very positive mm -hmm. is the fact that I think all of the camps in southern Berkshire have required vaccination not at this one in particular oh okay um well, so they have had to send those kids home. So the camps, but, right, the camps yeah. that did, all have right, let's put it as, okay. yeah, they can send the individual kids home without yeah. overreaching their entire program, which mm. has been very, very helpful. So thank Absolutely. you for that. Yeah. Rebecca had her hand up. I don't know oh, you, Amy. Um, go ahead, Rebecca. Do you, do you want to wait? Uh, go ahead. I was just going to, um, I can wait until Amy's done with her nursing update. Okay. Um, more things. So uh, as we mentioned, we have a lovely summer intern helping us. She's really great with graphics. So we're um, leveraging that and helping us design some flyers and stuff that we'll need in the fall. 
Uh, she's been building her data skills, working on some epi analysis of our Maven data, which is great. You know, she's at the beginner level, but we're, you know, we're building that. And um, so, so her sort of big, bigger final project I have, I wanted to put a question to the group. Um, what I had in mind initially uh, back in April or March when we started thinking about an intern was to have her do a, sort of really deep dive into the um, public health websites in Massachusetts and around the country and think about what would be useful for us to have on our website if we were going to develop mm -hmm. one. And, you know, recommendations, what seems to work, what doesn't, how to streamline it, you know, actual tools to use, just really have her go deep into that. Um, but, you know, I, I know there's this kind of ambivalence around that. Do we even have staff to maintain such a website? Would people really use it? You know, I think that's an ongoing question. Uh, so another question that I have uh, been thinking about for her to work on, um, I don't know if you're aware, so we, so we have it with COVID, a real big uh, data gap right now, right? Because of the, the vast majority of folks with COVID are testing at home now, and they're just yeah. not showing up in the state numbers and, and in the national numbers. And so we really don't have, you know, uh, I'm not sure if you folks are aware, you know, we We've now seen the ascendance within a quick short months, six months of uh, BA2, BA2.12, BA4, BA5, and now BA2.75 is on the rise and, and certainly and is, I think, 17% more transmissible than five. So this is rapid, um, you know, changing conditions and all, and all of these mutations actually um, work together to create repeated reinfections. So we're just going to keep seeing people get COVID over and over. I think a question for South County in particular is, are we particularly vulnerable to this, these recurring waves? Are we vulnerable because of our population, maybe being more elderly than, you know, your average demographic in the US or even in Massachusetts? Are we more vulnerable because we have a predominance of congregate care sites where we've seen transmission occur rapidly? And, and also our vaccine uptake hasn't been as high as the rest of the state. And in particular, fortunately, among some of the folks that work either in home care or in sort of quasi um, assisted care or assisted living uh, adjunct folks who aren't required to vaccinate. Um, you know, are we more vulnerable? And so what I've been thinking about what's, and then also we've got influx of visitors from all over the world and we've got, um, so whatever's going on in their communities comes to our community. And then we've got second homeowners, uh, many of whom spend half the year in states like Florida, where we know there's far less mitigation going on and, and less vaccination. So we're just having sort of this. And then the last thing, sorry, is that we don't have re like local bio data, biobot data. We have what's going on in Pittsfield, which really can be hard to say that that is necessarily relevant to what's happening in South County. And uh, so maybe an effort could be underway. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of not seeing a big push toward bringing that into more local spaces. And I, I don't see that happening. So my question for the group is, another thing I could have Marie work on instead is um, look into whether we could possibly with minimal uh, administrative effort, uh, develop an online at home positive test reporting system. There are other health departments doing this in Massachusetts. Um, around the state, it's happening, around the country, it's happening more at the county level, in Massachusetts, of course, more at the town level, larger towns than us, of course, but we could possibly do it for all of South County, uh, not necessarily restricted to our collaborative towns, and then it would give us perhaps more of a sense of what's actually happening, because we're really seeing um, just the sort of shift in macro thinking about does it even matter to know mm -hmm. how much transmission is happening locally or even you know at the state? Like we all know those numbers are so far off. We just look at them for trends. We look at the positivity percent for trends, but but really it's, it's sort of departed from reality so far. That's a question. Maybe we address it the next meeting. I just I don't know. No, those are are really interesting questions. I think the one you're just articulating is is the most valuable for us mm -hmm. uh, in terms of managing what's going to happen as we move forward in COVID. Um, and it strikes me that there are people out there who say, how do I report this? What am I supposed to do that with this information? So that would be a good asset. The other weird thought I had is, be, as you're talking about different people coming from all over the world and get their pep, is there anything working with something like Tanglewood and saying, 
how could we partner with you to understand more fully what mm. oh, 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 yeah, I, no way forget it's, it's not just tanglewood it's it, all over yeah it's very, it's well, what i was thinking of in, in line with that is is bringing the hotels in offering training to hotels yeah and how are they how do they seen interaction how do they call it? actually okay yeah. because yeah. you've got your cleaning staff mm -hmm. who are constantly exposed yeah. you know and god knows you, you know doing hotel cleaning is like probably one of the lower pits of hell yeah um for for people but you know think about where our transient population is staying so do we need to think about hotels b and b's but you what know, would we but what would we do about? well for example just yesterday i got a call from bmc they're about to discharge a fellow from california who came in for other reasons to the ER ended up being asymptomatically positive for COVID. He is traveling with a large group of extended family. They've all come out here from California. They have another flight home on the 10th, which happens to be the day he's no longer infectious. But all of their party is over 65 and uh, you know, fully vaxxed and boosted, but all staying together in this small hotel in Lenox, actually. And you know, it, it was quite a long conversation about strategy because we really have no mandate and we really have no you know sort of true authority around this other than to say he physically needs to remain in the room but you now have this sort of you've got the right the hotel staff well you've this got, is you, you yeah my thought is really what we're talking from from my point of view is what we're talking about is having them be able to talk to their employees about how they stay safe sure. you know we can't really we just can't I hate yeah. to say it this way, but we can't worry about the people who are coming in because you know what? They're going to go home mm -hmm. and we can't, we're, we're not there. But if we let these residents areas know that A, if they have questions about how their staff could be protected, what resources would their staff have? Because most of them are part-time, underpaid. You know, mm -hmm. these are the very vulnerable BIM people. But they are very well educated and protected. Well, yeah. BIM is, yeah. yes, if but their employers them. are not. Yeah. Not every employer is like Guido's. Okay? Well, I have to, I think we really have to address with them as a business issue. And I, you know, I, I, it's on And me. I say I Chamber not, of Commerce. Right. I have not reached out to them, just sort of dropped off and of off course. my radar. But I think that would be, and I, and I, maybe I, and maybe it's a little bit of a sort of self serving statement, but I want to say, I actually also feel like that might be a local board of health to chamber of Congress conversation yeah. at that level because I, I sometimes well, the, feel like they're kind of like well who are you what are you what are you going to tell us no the I'm problem the resource with, with information but I'm not the one at the level making the link that's how it right. feels sometimes right. Right. I think we should right. table that discussion for the next meeting hope some ideas I know it's it's a very it's very difficult right we, we but in the meantime well, you need to yeah. get the, yeah. the intern working so i, I mean, think developing you know, the, it's no harm for her to do that if you see that as a potentially more um, um useful task than having her explore a website so yeah i think so if i have, feel that I have way questions. we can develop that whether we do it or not is another matter yeah i have questions on your, your kind of breakdown but i'll, I'll yeah. let rebecca's right. had her hand up first so unless you have what finish your wrap around your updates and come back that, to that. that would be it actually that okay would be it. rebecca <laughs> Um, I'm, I really like that idea of, of coming up with some sort of local um, Southern Berkshire way of self-reporting at home antigen tests. I, I, I do think that that would be a valuable use of an intern's time. You know, it's not going to solve all of our problems. And I, I'm going to second Amy's question with like, you know, yes, it's more data, but like, what do we really get from it? But I do think ultimately it'd be helpful. So my vote is um, to go forward with that. I think that's that's a, that would be a valuable use. And even if it's only capturing 25% of positive at-home tests, I think that that's more information than we have currently and it can only be helpful, even if it doesn't translate to public health policy um, or um, more effective education. And I say that because I, I, at this point, I do believe that people are informed. Um, they know what to do if they test positive. They know what to do um, for the most part. I mean, I think there's still a little bit of handholding, but um, 
anyway, I'll just stop there. I, I do think it's, that would be a, a good use of an intern's time. But what I was going to say originally is this week I got a surprise delivery from um, DPH. I had forgot that I had requested like 5,000 surgical masks and 5,095 <laughs> masks and like 10 boxes showed up at my door and um, it's a good thing. I don't have a plan to get them out immediately. When I requested this, I was just kind of thinking like the fall and the winter. Um, but Amy and Jill and Jim and Jane, I, I kind of like to utilize the collaboratives, um, transportation to get that out. Um, these, you know, I ordered these for Great Barrington, but I'm not trying to hoard them for Great Barrington. Um, but it, it is kind of nice that we don't have the constraint of like, the obligation of getting them to the wider community. But like I said, I've got 10,000 masks now. Great. So um, I, I know you're already at places like Vim or you have relationships um, to deliver that PPE with like our libraries and Berkshire South organizations that are in Great Barrington. But again, I think I would like to hang on to them a little bit longer just because I do feel like um, I don't know, I don't mean to be pessimistic, but I, I think we're kind of in for something in a couple of weeks um, in terms of another wave, so. Rebecca, did you want me to pick up those supplies or a portion of those? Because we, we have the storage facility with all yeah. our stuff. Yeah, sure. Or I'll, or I'll shoot you there's, an email about coordinating that. I mean, there's there's space for it downstairs. They're already stored in our, our um, supplies closet. Sure. But like I said, if you guys are already out delivering masks or antigen tests um, to these organizations, I'd, I'd like to you, use you guys to do yeah. that for us. <laughs> we, may, we may hold off just a little bit, keep them where they are for now. We have a delivery of, I think, 3,000 coming or will be available to us in a couple of weeks to pick up. Okay. So, so that may take up our current storage, but, um, but certainly we will just keep replenishing okay. one another and um, and, and Elliot, I realized you're, as I was doing my um, quarterly reporting, um, at one point I had reached out early on about distributing masks to Mount Washington, mm -hmm. but as I looked at sort of where we ended up distributing everything, your town was the one in the collaborative that hadn't received any. So if you have a site where you'd like them, or you so need a supply, have really as many as maybe that's why. Right okay. now. So, so that's why I set. didn't press it. <laughs> that's fine. I, I figured if you needed to let me know, but I just wanted to know yeah, that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yep. Um, on the point of um going ahead and um doing the have the interim work on uh, self-reporting the biggest benefit i could see to that mm -hmm. is that what people who are looking for information and wanting they to do have something a place to go. they have a place and then also they would have then your guys's contact information mm -hmm. yeah. so it's like push PR. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and our url my my mm -hmm. only yeah, it might contribute to an overall sort of sense like the that we're managing this as a right. support yeah. which i think is really this abandonment feeling that an important thing that mm -hmm. folks who are especially most at risk are really feeling my so, only yes. question before i mean i'm looking for a formal vote on where to give amy guidance on where to go with the intern my only feedback would be security purposes you know if people are putting information into something yeah, you I know, think we'd have to think about what we, we actually want from we that. We have to be very yeah. careful because, like, and town websites are, don't have all these multiple yeah. levels yeah. of security yeah. securities to protect that information. Right. That's my only feedback. Yeah, and there may be some money allocation needed, and I think that's another question: is like, what would it cost? You know, that's part of her research, and where mm -hmm. can we find funding? And you know, and how have others done it? Well, yeah. So, yeah, I think this is and a good security, security is project. A, yeah, security is a big yeah, but, it, on but I think one of the things that's very disturbing is that clearly on a national level, what we are reduced to now is that the hospitals are like, oh, well, we only have four people, so there's not a problem. Right. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get more and more and more of that until they get crashed. Yeah, yeah that's the thing. It's, it can, it, you just get to a point and yeah. then everyone falls off the cliff together because we didn't see the cliff coming. Well, some of us saw the cliff coming even the last time, but like a couple of mutations away. So that's right. I mean, do you want, do, do you want to make a motion to, to, to yeah. Do just, we? Is it appropriate for us to, you were to come up advice. with? A, yeah, I'm seeking advice as I direct the intern to yeah. her next final sure. project. Oh, yeah. I appreciate the feedback. Right. I think right. we will be doing that. Yeah, Any, I'm ordering you to do that. Right. Okay. okay. Anyone else have feedback on Zoom on where we want to go with the intern? I think it's a great idea. 
Okay. Uh, yep. So Got nice. a nod. Yes. Oh, Brandy. And Brandy's. Oh, she lit up and then she stopped. I said yes. <laughs> oh, excellent. <laughs> All right. Community partner updates. <laughs> So yeah, Amy, we yeah. have I, Isaiah uh, on the call. So we're going to give him a little bit of a platform to, to talk and introduce himself. Um, uh -huh. Do you want to start with that? That'd be great. Go ahead, Isaiah. You can unmute yourself. Hi, can you hear me okay? Can. Okay. I'm Isaiah Gully. Um, I'm an advanced EMT at Southern Berkshire Ambulance. I also live in Sheffield. I'm on the Sheffield Fire Department as well. Um, I believe about two months ago, um, I was appointed as community outreach um, and engagement specialist at the squad, uh, in addition to my clinical role. Uh, the squad's undergone some um, change in management, um, pretty major changes in management, um, and the company's starting to move in a different direction. Um, we're trying to do some uh, more things uh, in the community, which is what my role is designed for. Um, we had uh, discussed doing some blood pressure clinics and had reached out to some towns. Um, and in that process, I found out about this group here. And uh, I had met with uh, Amy yesterday and found out about all the wonderful things uh, she's doing. And uh, really what I would like to do is uh, have the ambulance squad uh, help her in whatever project she has going on and uh, bring our perspective to things. and. Um, I think that would just be a, a great partnership to have. Um, for a while, it's um, kind of been neglected. Um, of course, we respond to emergencies in the community, but there's uh, more things in terms of prevention we could be doing. Um, and I'm looking forward to uh, starting that. Um, I, but yeah, I had a great meeting with uh, Amy yesterday. We had talked a lot about uh, some great ideas comment about ways the ambulance squad can help um, with the programs that she already has going. Isaiah, I'm really glad you followed up on that suggestion of connecting with the collaborative because it just seems so logical to me when we met that I couldn't imagine fighting. <laughs> right, right. And I, and I also, um, it's, it was so great to talk with Isaiah and I, I really liked hearing, um, you know, we were able to sort of clarify sort of where the impetus is coming from, from the ambulance squad. Where the funding is coming from so so they're sort of self-supporting around some of this and then also um what they're already doing that i think has a direct bearing and relationship to some of the work for example that the opioid working group is trying to do so um one of the things isaiah i'll mention is you were talking about the narcan um packages i think that were sort of being developed along with training when you've responded to um an emergency requiring resuscitation and involving opioid use um, and one thing that Isaiah wasn't aware of, and I don't know if you've talked with Sean uh, about this, but about the warm handoff mm -hmm. link. And, um, you know, that might be another thing, the potential. I know it's sort of initially designed for providers, but it's also been talked about to be used, put out into the community. Mm -hmm. So that could be added to their kit, for example. Yeah. And maybe maybe um, Isaiah could join the working group even as sort of, because he described to me their, I don't know if you wanted to speak for just a minute about sort of the role the yeah. ambulance plays in the mental health and opioid emergencies in the county, I was just reminded, so crucial. So um, I believe it was last year that, Turn of course, off. EMS runs off of protocols established by um, the state health department. And they had basically come up with a policy, I believe it was last year, um, regardless, it was recent, um, that said that basically EMS mm -hmm. On the ambulance, you could have these kits um, that contain Narcan. So where you, if you responded to a overdose call, you could leave behind a kit to the patient or the patient's family um, containing Narcan. Um, because a lot of times we encounter people who don't want to go to the hospital after they've been um, revived with Narcan. Um, so this just is a way to get this life-saving drug out into the community. Um, and it was, um, yeah, a recent thing that the state did. Um, so we've got some support from local um, addiction groups that uh, are interested in funding ideas like this. Um, and we've been working on that idea and are hopefully pretty soon and have that on our ambulances to uh, be able to hand out 
Um, so we're looking forward to that. Um, I'm not sure if anybody else in the county has done it. So it'll be yep. cool. That's uh, great, Isaiah. And then you, we had talked yesterday about um, the ambulance's role in sort of mental health and uh, other things with addiction services. And uh, I had mentioned to Amy that, you know, these are things that we're constantly doing, I'd say almost on a daily basis. Um, it's a large part of our call volume um, is when people need um, services for addiction, um, anything, we are the ones that um, transport them to where they have to go. Um, I guess an example would be is if the police encounter someone that says, you know, I really want to seek um, help in detoxing um, or want to get help with any um, substance abuse issues, the police then call the ambulance and the ambulance transports the nearest facility is BMC. So if somebody calls in Sheffield, uh, we're taking them to BMC. Um, so it's, it's a little bit of a long drive, but that's, that is our role in it. Um, that's just um, the way that it's been kind of done for a while now, um, but it is something we do all the time. So um, Isaiah, so I am um, facilitate the South County Opioid Working Group. So like Gary's on Jane. The, oh, hi, I'm Jane. <laughs> hi. Um, and so I would love to sit down with you because we, because of all the changes, we've, we've struggled to get a, a, a face um, of someone who had time to sit down with us. So I'm just really so happy that you're in that position. And, you know, some of the things we've talked about, and we can talk about this offline as well, is like providing support and um, possibly bringing training if you guys want that. But, you know, there are some tools, I think, um, that we've rolled out to the nurse practitioners. We want to roll it out to um, police departments. And then, of course, you guys, which you really are the, I mean, you might not get there first all the time, but you guys are really the ones that are making the decisions on how to help people. And there's a, a huge social component of your job. So um, I look forward to working with you. What's, right. your, what's your email address? I'm gonna, I'm gonna connect you guys. Okay. You so Rebecca had her hand up. Hi Isaiah, thanks Hi. for that. I'm just gonna agree with Jane and everybody else. That's incredible. Um, I'm happy to hear that EMS does this work. It's it's just wonderful, thank you. Um, and then, but you reminded me of something. So Pat, Jim, um, Ellie and I, we, were, we are trying to put a proposal together for um, town admins and, and this group on um, how best to use um, the state. Op I don't know if you were here in the beginning of the meeting, um, but we're trying to put a proposal together for, for towns to best use this opioid um, settlement money. Um, and what's come up a lot is, you know, data, like how do we convince um, town administrators or town managers that there is a problem in, in South County? Um, because when you look at the numbers of, of deaths, um, we don't really compare to anywhere else in the state. Um, and then, you know, we can talk all day about how that's just an issue in itself. Like, you know, it's not a problem until there's deaths. But so I was wondering if, if EMS has any data of like how many overdoses, how many overdose calls you go to or how many, um, how often you distribute Narcan. Um, if there's, I mean, I'm sure a lot of that is HIPAA protected, but I just didn't know if there was anything that you could share with the group in terms yeah. of data. So actually that's a part of my position as well. Um, and I have data in regards to all that. Um, so I can see how many overdose calls we respond to, um, how many how many people that um, we trans, I, I know where everybody has been transported. I can see the reason why. Um, so I have access to all that information. Um, Pat. So Ellie, Jim, do you think that that would be helpful to have? Absolutely. Yes. So, so yeah, and, and I'll, Rebecca, let me know when you're done, because I have some comments too that, to piggyback on what you're talking about. I'm done. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So, so thanks, Isaiah. I think a couple of things come to my mind. I, I, I like when you talked about these kits, about, you know, you're trying to figure out a funding stream, how much they cost per unit, whatnot. I'd be really fascinated, maybe with your connections with Jane, to understand what those cost factors are, mm -hmm. A, for 
possible future grant funding and be possible existing funding to help support that because I would I, I can't speak on behalf of my three boards. I would love to explore that with, 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 with me. and I know I don't know if you cover Lee Lennox and Stockbridge through Southern Berkshire I know Lee fire has their own, but I would under, I would love to understand that model in, in not only figure out funding mechanisms to support it, but B, you know, towns are also looking at options and how to utilize the opioid settlement funds. And as we're still working on a proposal, they want other ideas on how to utilize some of this funding. You know, some of it, you know, we're gonna give some to rural recovery to, you know, cover the people in South County. But in addition to that, um, could the South County towns put a little bit of money towards helping you folks out to get these kits out into the community? That's a perfect idea of how to utilize some of that funding as well. And, um, and I think that's really it. And, and, and to, to answer Rebecca's question, any data we can get to add to our argument to pool settlement dollar resources for South County, the more data, the better. Yeah, absolutely. I can uh, pass it along to uh, uh, Amy. I can send it off to her. But like, I like your model because I would, I would love to bring that model to Lee to Lennox and to others, uh, I think Lee covers Stockbridge too, I think for ambulance, but like not to put more burden on EMS and fire, but like if you have a model that's working, you're getting these kits out in the community, I would love to see how that works. Um, so I can at least float the idea to our other constituents because it's I, I, that's that's outstanding to hear that that's happening. That's awesome. And then once once the kits are on the ambulance, um, the state does require pretty thorough tracking of when they're uh, handed out. So I'll have numbers as to how many we give out um, and in which situations they're given. Terrific. Thank you very much. I'm sure we'll follow up with you on, on many of these things, uh, Isaiah. Yeah. And one thing I can do too, Isaiah, we have a roster of the collaborative board but community participants, we can, you know, Amy can connect all of us together. I can add you to the roster. And, you know, we, we, we also meet the second Friday of every month at 9 a.m. And it's a public meeting. You're more than welcome to attend. And after the meeting, we, we do put our minutes onto our Tritown site and the recording goes to CTSB, which is community television of South, South Berkshire. So you're always invited to join our collaborative meetings at any time you want to listen in. All right, thank you. I, I just also want to say that um, Jim's point about taking a model and showing it to a group that may not actually be in our collaborative service per se is exactly what this collaborative is made for. So we're hope, ha helping our immediate towns for Southern Berkshire, but we're also including those communities that they may not be served by that particular organization, but that organization has something to offer to the area. And I, and I just think that that's something to bring up to people like Smitty who are looking at their whole area that doesn't, you know, it's another side to our collaborative. That's what collaboratives do. They spread out and they help. It's right. it's not that you're ordering anybody to do anything. So this is a great, thank you. That's, well, it's great to hear that this is coming on. And, and Jane, one thing I, when you guys connect, like, you know, if you get a fire ambulance, not to say this would ever happen, that they don't, they're not interesting in doing that model. Right. Are we restricted to EMS fire and ambulance to distribute these kits? Can oh. boards of health do it? So, can so yes. nurses do yeah. it? So if you're trained, you can do yeah. it. So, yeah. and there's quite a bit of money. So the kit, they they provide usually two doses of Narcan as well as a CPR right. mask. Is that right? Yeah. And they're in a plastic baggie. And so like um, Gary is a trainer. I'm sure that Isaiah, probably you have people in there that can train people. But one of the things, the two things that we've been talking about is like getting them to like gas stations and hotels and training those people. Hotels, that's one of the places that was coming oh, in my mind. Yes. And then there's also at the um, at the BHS level or um, at Fairview level, I can't remember which guy it was, but one of the high level guys is even interested in having 
wall mount kits, like in public spaces, like AEDs. Like AED. So there's a lot to this. I'm so happy to have um, you at the table, Isaiah, and um, can't wait to maybe we could schedule a meeting and kind of go over. Yeah, great. So we're wrapping up community part. So thank you, Isaiah. Like I say, you're welcome anytime. And looking forward to learning more. I do have Mike jumped in, and I'm not sure, Mike. We're kind of wrapping up our meeting, but I, no, I, I I apologize. I had a doctor appointment, and I sort of was 50-50. Should I bother to even jump onto the Zoom? But I figured if there's something that, and I I just walked through the door two seconds ago. But if there's something that I can do, I, I figured I better just stop in and see if there's anything you need from me. Well, I'll be reaching out to you on a separate issue, Jane and okay. I, on something that came up yesterday. But I didn't know if there's anything you had to offer. You know, no, but I. I will say I cut the very tail end of Isaiah and 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 uh, in Framingham we've given out over three thousand um, uh, three thousand Narcan kits, uh, and um, uh, I'm I'm on the DA's task force um, uh, opioid task force in Middlesex County, and you know the probably the worst city in Massachusetts would be Lowell, which is in Middlesex County, and about a third of the rescues that have occurred in Lowell have not been ambulances. They've been casual passerbys that happen to have Narcan in their pockets. Which is very interesting. And that's that's the result of, I, th I think the Mopsy grant, and I, I don't know, Isaiah, if you're working under under the Mopsy grant or not. I didn't I didn't hear that part of, of your presentation, but the Mopsy grant is, is huge in that in, in this area and other CDC funding. And and the numbers actually are stunning. If you if you get it out there in the community, I carry it. You know, and and I, to, to my knowledge, I don't I don't have any friends that that, that have issues at all with substance use. But I, I think everybody should have it. Everybody should get the training, and and everybody should do it. It's a great thing you're doing, Isaiah. And and uh, I think you know you guys are gonna you'll see a difference. You really will in in your community. So. Thank you. I think I think one thing that would be really helpful, Mike. This is Jane. Is, hi, Jane. Hi there. Um, is. To, we had talked about the needs assessment that's coming up by the state. And, um, you know, from my perspective, we're hoping to really help facilitate our towns to really get that in early as, you know, as soon as it starts coming out. What can we expect from that? Okay, so it's actually not a needs assessment. It's a capacity assessment, which is okay. there's actually a fine line difference in that. And what's going to happen is that uh, they're going to be the DPH will be reaching out to, to you guys all. Uh, and um, they'll actually probably, it's looking as though they're gonna be sending somebody physically to come and visit with you. Uh, they're gonna be going through uh, uh, any, any, they're looking at this point, they're looking for capacity. What, what do you have in your health departments? Uh, what trainings do you, do you need? What certifications do you already have? Uh, some people are are eligible for RS, but they haven't had the chance or the or the budget to, to go do it. And and when they're all done with this capacity assessment, they will be able to say that, for instance, um, uh, in in any given town, uh, we need to put so much money in for training so that we can bring these people up. There's there's uh, there are uh, grandfather clauses in there that if you've been working in a managerial position in a health department for seven years or more, uh, and you're not an RS or a CHO or anything of that sort, uh, they're, they're, they're grandfathering everybody that, that, that's been working for seven years is to be considered okay. Uh, if you want additional trainings and additional certifications, uh, they'll be made available free of charge by DPH. And... Um, uh, they, you won't have to travel far. I think that, you know, Jane, and I, I think that you're, you, you and uh, Jim are both um, aware of the fact that they're doing regional training pods. Now they're setting those up right now. And I think this one, well, I know there's at least one in Berkshire. There's probably a couple in Berkshire. I'm not positive what the locations in Western Mass are, but um, you won't have to travel far. Uh, and, uh, and, and you, you'll be able to get the trainings that you all need uh, and trainings you want. Um, but the capacity assessment is really to see 
how prepared we are. I don't know if you folks have seen the report that came out last Wednesday <clears throat> from the legislature. I will send a copy of it. In fact, I'll make a note right now to do that. I'll send a copy of it to, to, to Jim and Jane, and then you get, I'll ask you to distribute it around. It's a, it's a, uh, it's, it's sort of heavy duty reading. It's, it's, it's 35 pages long. And it was the, it was the, 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 the state legislature, the, the House and Senate put together a joint committee. Joe Comerford was the chair on the Senate side, uh, and they did a listening tour across the state on, on what, what the lessons learned were from COVID. And if anybody at that table, or if I were going to write this report, it was, you, when you read it, you're gonna say, this is exactly what I would have said. It, it just takes the administration, it takes the secretary to task for skipping over local prepared people, skipping over your, your FAPs and, 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 your, and, and, and all of your HMCs and, and all of that. It's just, you, you remember the frustration we all felt when we heard the state was gonna be doing all the immunizations and we weren't. It's, it takes all of that to task and it takes apart the, the whole incident command system uh, and, and how the, the, the command center that was, that was set up uh, completely undid decades, if not a century, of knowledge about emergency preparation and, and, and delivering emergency services. And we it, get it. OK, we get so it. send us the report, yeah. Mike. Don't yeah. redact the whole yeah. thing. So, All right, you get it. And then the other thing is, it's like, um, as far as after the needs, is, the capacity assessment is done, um, yep. I just want to make sure that there's a voice that like a lot of towns don't have the structure to pay their people to go to the training. So mm -hmm. I just want to make sure the state it's paid from the, the, the $200 million the time, ARPA funding, the, the time of the inspector to go to the training. Um, that's really a critical thing. I'm going to, I'm going to make sure that that's on, that that's in, in play. I will okay. think of that right now. Because that's the problem, right? Like, um, it yeah. comes to mind. A lot of towns have almost consultants do their septics, right? They have a, yeah. uh, but there's no time there for training, and there's no mechanism to pay them, like okay. literally zero mechanism. Yeah. So if you could keep that in mind, that would be great. I will put that right on. I'll put that on Sam's plate. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. We yeah. look forward to that report, really. Thanks, Mike. I'll be reaching out to you on that training hub uh, concerns that Jane and I have. Right. That'll be a separate conversation. Okay, I guess I touched the nerve. Good. We'll be in touch, too. Okay, excellent, excellent. Okay. Quickly moving on, the updates, training events, MOA conference. Uh, oh, yeah, so... Um, one of the things that I didn't put on the agenda and I probably should have um, is the is the FDA um, the FDA um, track no oh grants yes. grants so okay. under this grant there is actually training for going to food um, food program type things it covers mileage and you know it covers your hotel and then um, it also covers the um, actual registration and so I had talked to Jim about possibly you know either for this year may this year asking to see if anyone was interested in going they would have to take the food track um that's the caveat but if there are people who are interested we can put in an ask um to change what we were planning on doing which was I was going to go to like Denver well I don't have time to go to Denver do you know what I mean so um that's one thing. And then the other thing is, is that upcoming, there is the FDA grant round is, is open again. And um, I think Sheffield and New Marlboro have really benefited from it. The negative part is, is the reporting and um, the, you know, getting the different towns to have the different funds or whatever. So it hasn't been without um, its Challenge. challenges, which we knew. Um, so I want the um, collaborative to keep that in mind and if you think that you would like some extra funds for your um, for your program and I can maybe send out some ideas um, I think it would be a good time to start collaborating like figuring out what the best way to achieve those goals would be right great and I guess my summary on the MHOA conference that Jane's gonna sort so basically we have $7,500 uh, of training expenses that we're never going to spend and so we we met as a staff yesterday and included you know Amy and Jill, you know, 
if we get approval, you know, we're willing to pay anyone in the collaborative to go to the MHOA conference and we would cover all those expenses under the grant, the, you know, uh, food track. It, 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 but you would have to commit to the food track. I, I always send staff anyway under the Tritown budget and, and Brandy, this would include Otis as well for, for Heather um, because the, the Tritown grant covers Otis and Monterey is one kind of uh, application. So if Heather and others wanna go to MHOA in this fall, uh, contingent upon getting the approval through Jane and the FDA, we would want to have those conversations kind of sooner rather than later so we can start to collect the MHOA applications and the process because the early bird's already out for MHOA, but we're willing to cover those costs for anyone in the collaborative that wants to go to MHOA for two nights. And then there's always next year, right? So that's the other thing is that, that there's going to be $7,500 next year. So this is something but maybe then you'll have time to go to Denver. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> and or other towns can find other people that they need to then start training. Right. So you get mm -hmm. one and then you get somebody for the next year, which is great. Thank you. Appreciate Terrific. that. Okay. Um the next meeting date is August 12th, mm -hmm. if that suits everyone. Uh we will again do the hybrid method. Now it's allowed. Now it's allowed. Is that was actually passed. Right, Rails passed, right? The the Mike, the we saw something last night that the house passed the uh forever zoom option. Sorry, I was muted. Yes. And uh I it'll probably I I'm betting it's gonna get signed today. Nice. That's fabulous. All right. Okay. Anything else? I think we're all done. If not, a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Hey, well, then you. Oh, good. We're reversing we're it. Yeah. Right. All right. I'll second. All right. right. This is awful. <laughs> <laughs>